Hello, my crafty loving friends. Welcome to Repurpose My Way. I'm Shelly. Today we're going to do some repurposing of some previously electrical lights. Uh, I found some at one thing I got at the dump free shack, we're going to call it, where people put their yard sale stuff that never sold or whatever. Uh, and you're going to probably look at it and say, why in the heck would you pick something like that up? Well, it's a challenge because I want to see if I can fix it up. The other two things I got at Goodwill. So we're going to start with uh, what I got at the dump. So this guy is what I got. This guy was at the dump. He was in a box. He has all of his glass. We're going to call him a he today. I don't know. And uh, it was all put together. This was hooked to the bottom. And I've taken that off. Inside there was a, uh, a little socket in there to put your bulb in. This previously was a uh, an outdoor light, like it would be next to your, your door. As you come in, you flick, up, flick the light on so you could see. Uh, so it's got this little thing here, which I've already started to loosen up, and we're going to take that off. And I've taken the top off so that I could get um, the glass out. And I don't know if you can tell on there, but this is pretty messed up. It's, it's a little bent and it looks like it's been squished and uh, all that. But we're going to see if we can fix it and make it look uh, cool. You know, primitive items. One of the reasons why I like them is because you don't, they don't have to be perfect. You can fix them up to be perfect and then you can turn around and distress them and make them look not so perfect, which is what I like. So I'm going to give this lantern a nice good coat of black spray paint. This is the Rust-Oleum flat black spray paint that I like to use. It's one of my favorites, or it is my favorite spray paint to use. So what I've decided to do is take the back that would attach to the wall, the circle, and I'm going to use that as the bottom part. So here I'm showing you this is how it was set up before. And now I'm going to take it and use it as my base instead of making one out of wood. So I need to attach that with some good strong glue. So I'm going to use E6000, which is a very strong adhesive glue that I think is going to hold the top onto the bottom base of that really well. And then, so that takes a while to dry. So what I'm going to do is use the hot glue for an immediate stick so that I can start my decorating with this, hopefully. So with that all glued together, it's all dry now. I've let it sit for a little while and I added a little bit more underneath so you can really see a lot of the glue around the bottom. So I'm just going to take some of this jute rope and go around the bottom and cover up that extra glue and adhesive that has dripped down a little bit. quite a hole down in the middle of the lantern where the electrical socket went for the light bulb. So I'm going to stuff it with some Spanish moss to build it up so that I can put a light, a little tea light in there and hopefully it will stick out enough and not fall into the hole and show. There we go. So I'm just showing you there. It's I'm just fitting it to see and it's not falling in, so I think that's going to work well. And it also gives it a nice base of um, to add my greenery to uh, to make that stand out in the lantern also.
Okay, big reveal coming up. See what you think. I'm going to do is this three light wall hanging light I guess I, I don't really know what you'd call it but I got this at Goodwill and it says I paid five dollars for it I may have paid five dollars for it uh, and it may also have been 50% off I do shop a lot of the 50% off sales so it may have been 50% off they all had these so I still have these things here I'm not sure if I'm going to keep them or not um, but I have kind of an idea on what I want to do with this. I've got kind of a vision, uh, and I'm not sure if it'll come about, but we will see. But first I need to get the rest of this cord out. Uh, all the rest of them had been taken out, and I just have this one left that I need to work on and get my tape and sticker off. And uh, we're going to see what we can do with this guy. So with this project as well, I'm using my Rust-Oleum flat black spray paint and giving it a good coat of paint all around. And then once that's dry, I hit it with the Rust-Oleum clear flat sealer. Now it's all dry and I'm showing you here that the little candle cups, I need to, the middle one I've already done it. I've taken these pliers and are these vice grips and I'm bending down the fluted area on the side um, all the way down not so they're flat but very close to flat I have some glass jars small ones that I have that would fit on that really nicely but it won't with those fluted areas up so high so I have to flatten them out a little and there's a little candle holder in the middle that I have to peel off so that those glass cups will sit flat or flat-ish on the top. I'm going to use some nice of uh, some of the E6000, uh, and that should glue that down nicely um, and keep those on there. So that's the little glass jar. It comes with a little lid. And I got these, I think, at Goodwill a long time ago, and I just had them kicking around and haven't done anything with them. So all three of those candle cup holders, I flattened them out mostly all the way. And see, now the jars will sit flat on there. And I can add the E6000. And I also add a little bit of hot glue just so that it... Um, will seal quickly and hold it while the E6000 dries. So, and I'm going to set that aside and not touch it for a while because I do want this to just glue up and be nice and sturdy because I don't want those to fall out and break. to be extra cautious of making sure that it's glued down I'm taking the hot glue and going around the edges and the fluted part to make sure that they are secure so now I'm going to set that aside and while that's drying I've taken this little tin star that I have it's a little candle holder and I'm going to put some Mod Podge on there and I'm going to grubby this up and make it look like a rusty grubby star. So the Mod Podge and then taking my mixture, oh it's got cinnamon and nutmeg and all kinds of good stuff, ground coffee, um, it's got, uh, uh, I don't know, I can't even think of the rest of it. <laughs> it's a mixture, there is a video on it, I'll link it here somewhere of what I used in there. 
but I put that on and then I kind of tap it off and make sure the loose stuff falls off and then I take my Mod Podge and go over it and give it a nice seal. Now this is looking white and muddy and yucky right now but once it dries it dries clear and that uh, spice mix actually gets a little bit darker and it looks just like rust and it's really cool. There we go. So there's the star. It's a little bit darker and I'm going to glue that right in the middle behind the middle candle holder. I wish I had three because I'd probably put all three on. So after this dried, we glue on the star, and then I'm taking some of my Spanish moss again, and because the middle, the bottom of these jars are kind of rounded, I want the lights that I put in them to sit flat, so I'm using the moss to kind of help that, and then I'll just nestle those lights right in the middle of that moss. I'm going around the top with a little bit of jute. This one is twine, so it's the thinner stuff. I may have gotten this off Amazon. I think that's where I got it. It's a big roll of it. So I'm putting that around the top. Just, I don't know, I went around two or three times. And now I'm taking this black and white checked ribbon and going around the lights to give them a little bit more color to go with it. And because I had glued around the edges, I put some twine around that too. So here's the finished product. Hope you like it. And last but not least, uh, this really cool light. Now this guy is not going to get painted. I'm trying to figure out what I wanna do. I wanna make a stand like I'm going to do with the other one, uh, but I'm trying to decide what colors will go well with it. And uh, I think I'm going to be taking all of this stuff off. It, this was a hanging light, it would hang from the ceiling. Uh, I think it's really cool. It is heavy, it's a heavy light. I paid $6 at Goodwill for it. So um, we're going to clean this up and let's take a look and see what I do with this. So this is going to need some power tool action here. I'm using my jigsaw and I'm going to cut out some squares to hold up the lantern and make a base for the bottom. So this is a spindle from the back of a kitchen chair, dining room chair, and I took it all apart and saved all the spindles. So I'm just cutting this down because I want it fairly short. I, this lantern is really heavy, so I don't want it to stand up too high, and I want to use the thick parts of the spindle to give it a nice base. So I'm sanding that off to make sure that it's nice and flat, and then I'm going to assemble. So I'm using these three pieces of wood the bigger one is going for the bottom, and then the two smaller ones are going on the top. And we're just going to attach them with a drill, and then we're going to drill some holes, and then we're going to screw the screws in, and we're going to use Gorilla wood glue to make sure that they all stay together nicely and not fall apart. So the smaller piece is made to go inside of the lantern as like a base to hold it so that it doesn't slide off. So that is what that is for. This little ring on the top used to be attached so I had to E6000 that so that it would stay and if anybody grabbed it by that hopefully it would be strong enough for them to pick it up with it which hopefully they won't but you never know. So now I'm taking the antique wax that I have and just going all over the wood pieces to make sure that they're all covered with a nice stain 
and then I'm going to wipe them off, wipe it all down, take off the excess. Now with this part I was going to just do a dry brush on this stand and leave a lot of the brown coming through. Uh, once I did that I wasn't really happy with it so I decided to do a second coat, a thicker coat of it and this is the plaster Waverly paint, chalk paint, and I did a thicker coat and just covered it completely. And then once it was dry, I did go back and sand it down. I'm wet distressing here, and then I do take my a little bit of sandpaper before I spray it all and give it a quick clear coat and just go and touch up some spots where I wanted to see more of the distress that I couldn't get with my wet rag that I used. Now I'm taking some lace ribbon that I have and I'm going to go around the edges on the top and the bottom to give it a little more of a finished look. And I think it looks really nice with that plaster paint. Um, it stands out just a little bit and it gives it more of a dainty finished look on it. have this cute little grapevine wreath that I wanted to add some Spanish moss to so that I can put it inside the lantern and not have it fall out every time you wanted to change the light or turn the light on or off because I want to put a, another little tea light inside there and have that glowing out of the lantern. So I glued on all the Spanish moss that I could on there and then trimmed it so that, because it's quite a tight little squeeze to get that lantern down over it. I'm going to have to trim a little bit more to get that to go down a little bit easier because it's not really having, having it. It's not liking it. So I did trim it a little bit more. Now I'm taking off a few of these long pieces of this vine that I got from Michael's recently or Hobby Lobby. I guess it was Hobby Lobby recently and I got them for half off. So I just cut off a couple of those and wrapped it in a round and tried to keep it inside of that ring so that it wouldn't hinder the lantern going over the top of it. And then around the base I also decided to put some moss down there as well and another piece of greenery going around that just to add dimension and tie the two pieces together so it didn't look like it was just a basic old stand it was on. I wanted it to look really pretty. Once I got that done, I decided that I needed some more greenery going down around the spindle. So I cut another few pieces of the greenery and then stapled them on. I flipped this stand upside down and stapled them on up underneath where the lantern's going to sit so that you can't really see that they're stapled on. It's nice and secure. And now I'm just going to kind of wrap it down around and have it just kind of drape over the end. I think that looks really cute. Let's see what you think.
hope you guys enjoyed my trash to treasure thrift flip. I would love to know which one you like the best. Let me know down in the comments. I think all three of them came out pretty cool and I'm pretty happy with them. So if you're interested in any of these, they're posted on my Etsy shop. Link is down in the description and I'll leave a link to a playlist here for you guys to check out of more thrift flips and trash to treasures. Thanks for watching.